Mutants turn evil sometimes. It's just the way it goes. I mean, to this day, some mutants are just still treated really badly in Marvel Comics. Like, some people in the universe just straight up hate them, which kind of sucks. Sometimes they end up turning evil because of that, or other times they just turn evil because, well, they, just because they want to. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Top 10 Nerd. I am your host, David Raff, and today we are going to be talking about the top 10 mutants who became evil. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to Top 10 Nerds so you never miss one nerdy video. Now, with all that being said, let's get started. Number 10, Wither. Kevin Ford, or better known as Wither, was a former student of Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. He's a mutant with the power of organic decay, which means basically when he touched any form of organic matter, it would break down the binding forces between the molecules and cause whatever he's touching to wither away. <laughs> get his name now. He wasn't really all that great at controlling it though. When he first arrived at the school, he was a bit of a loner, but he eventually made some friends. He was especially close with Laurie Collins, also known as Wallflower. Years later, during the House of M storyline, he touched Laurie's arm and accidentally ended up crippling her. He then decided to run away and was recruited by Selene to fight against the X-Men. Number nine, Bishop. Lucas Bishop, or better known as Bishop, has a very, very interesting story. You see, his mission was to travel back and to find a traitor in the X-Men and stop this terrible future that he was living in. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, not exactly. After Scarlet Witch wiped out a ton of the mutant population, Hope Summers appeared, and everyone saw her as some sort of mutant messiah. Bishop then realizes that she is partially responsible for the terrible future that he lived in and will stop at nothing to kill her. He even ends up betraying the X-Men, which in turn makes him realize that he is the traitor that he was looking for all along. And instead of killing Hope, he ends up killing Cable. And now, in the future, he is known as a villain. That's pretty crazy. I really messed up. Number eight, Colossus. Colossus is generally seen as a really nice guy. I mean, look how he's portrayed in the Deadpool films. People just absolutely love him. But unfortunately, he has turned to the dark side. He ended up suffering a brain injury, and then shortly after, he lost his sister to something known as the Legacy Virus, which took the lives of a lot of mutants. Because of this, he ends up siding with Magneto for a little while and goes against the X-Men. But he does eventually return to the side of good. But he was evil, which is why he is on this list. Number seven, Gambit. Gambit technically started out as a villain. He was a con man and thief, but he did, you know, eventually become a hero. He's one of the most famous and most popular, you know, of the X-Men. He has been a part of multiple events and stories where he saved the world. But at one point, he did go back to being evil. Not entirely his fault, though. It was kind of, you know, for Apocalypse. Which you'll be hearing about more as this list goes on. He became one of Apocalypse's four horsemen and tried to kill his friends. He didn't stay that way forever, and he rejoined the team later on and has continued to be a crucial part of the team going forward. Number six, Iceman. In the Age of Apocalypse universe, Bobby Drake, aka Iceman, is not the one we know and love. In the original universe, he's, you know, a nice guy that you could just rely on. He is a crucial part of the X-Men and has saved hundreds of people. But that's not the case in the Apocalypse timeline. This Bobby ends up turning against his team to the point where he even reveals the location of the X-Men's super secret underwater base to Wolverine, who was also working for Apocalypse at the time. Not cool, Bobby. Not cool. Although, he didn't really get away with it. Later on, he ended up being killed by Nightcrawler. So, you know. Number five, Namor. Namor has a very interesting relationship with people who live on land. And by interesting, I mean, it's pretty rocky. He usually is not a fan of them. Although, he has worked with them, you know, before, and even allowed the X-Men to operate in the ocean. But that hasn't always been the case. He has consistently let his hatred of the land cloud his judgment, to the point where he has had multiple fights with not only just the X-Men, but the Avengers. He also has a lot of beef with Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. The two have had so many fights that I have lost count. Number four, Cyclops. Usually Scott Summers is a stand-up guy, known as one of the most famous leaders of the X-Men. And when you think of him, evil is not really a word that would come to mind. But it has happened to Scott before. It started during the Schism storyline, where his leadership skills were questioned. He began sending out young mutants on assassination missions, which is kind of weird. And then his leadership, you know, was obviously questioned, leading to a massive brawl with none other than Wolverine. This whole arc led into the Avengers vs. X-Men storyline. In Avengers vs. X-Men, he ended up becoming possessed by the Phoenix Force and he killed Charles Xavier. Of course, that wasn't entirely his fault, since 
you know, you couldn't really control it. Number three, Angel. Warren Worthington III is a mutant, well, with, you know, you guessed it, wings. He's a proud member of the X-Men, but ended up becoming their enemy. Archangel. He becomes one of Apocalypse's four horsemen. He did eventually break free from Apocalypse, but the whole encounter really just changed him going forward. Warren was never really the same after that. He has consistently wavered between good and evil, sometimes going back and referring to himself as Angel, and then other times becoming bad and becoming Archangel. Number two, Wolverine. Wolverine becoming bad isn't really a new thing. I mean, there have been multiple instances in the comics where Wolverine has become evil. During the Age of Apocalypse storyline, where he was one of uh, Apocalypse's four horsemen, or the time where his body was taken over by a demon and he became Helverine and caused all sorts of mayhem, or there's even the time where he became a vampire. He also even murdered a kid in the Ultimate Universe. It's just, the list goes on and on. But, at the same time, that doesn't take away from how iconic Logan is. He's just this amazing hero and will always stay that way, regardless, you know, if he turns evil sometimes. Number one, Jean Grey. This is probably one of, if not the most famous story in X-Men history, the Dark Phoenix Saga. Fans adore it. It was this massive, action-packed, heartbreaking event. I mean, it's so popular that they've even tried to make it into two movies. Fans weren't really crazy about them, but the fact that it was adapted twice really shows you how popular it is. Jean Grey becomes Dark Phoenix after harnessing the power of the Phoenix Force, one of the most powerful things in the whole Marvel Universe. This tragic tale also does not have a happy ending. I mean, on the one hand, Jean managed to become herself again, but in order for her to save everyone, she had to die which had massive ramifications on the rest of the team going forward. All right, there you have it, guys, the top 10 mutants who became evil. What does your list look like? Let us know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to Top 10 Nerds so you never miss one nerdy video. I'm your host, David Raff, and thank you so much for watching.